What do the Mayo Clinic, Gwyneth Paltrow and some Formula One drivers have in common? They use infrared saunas by clear light to elevate their performance, recovery and health. But what's the science behind these saunas? How do they differ from traditional ones? To answer these questions and many more, I have the pleasure of bringing you Johannes Kedelhot, the CEO and co-founder of Clearlight Saunas International, one of the leading infrared sauna manufacturers in the world. So let's dive right in. Hey Johannes, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today and expand our knowledge all about saunas. Thanks, mate. Look forward to diving deeper. Yeah, so we will go way deeper on the topic later in the episode, but if you would have to sum it up briefly for our viewers, why are saunas important for health and longevity? That's a challenge to uh, say that in a few words and sentences. I mean, I think, you know, saunas have been around for hundreds of years, but I think there's definitely a bit of a, a second revolution actually happening at the moment. Um, you know, yeah, contrast therapy, which is heat and cold exposure, definitely is a very trendy thing. You see a lot of stars, a lot of health gurus post about it, rave about it. Tony Robbins is a big advocate. You know, Huberman, uh, Peter Atia, these are just some of the names. And and the reason why is I think that, you know, we know that saunas and ice bath and, and cold exposure feel good. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's common sense for a lot of people to enjoy that. And some people might not like hot saunas, in which case you can go to lower temperature saunas or do a, a, a hot bath. But Overall, playing with an increase in core temperature and then also with a reduction in core temperature has amazing health benefits. And I think the reason why they're really trendy at the moment is that there's a lot more knowledge coming out. I mean, we live in a very fast um, uh, age from a technology perspective. There's more and more you know, computing power. There's more and more studies. There's more and more communication, right? So we're very well connected globally. And... That really leads to the fact that there's more and more knowledge to be shared on saunas. You know, we have long-term studies coming out that show all cause mortality reductions of up to 45% in Finnish men. And, you know, the, it's, it's very clear that the more often the, you sauna, the less uh, likely you're essentially dying. Like, you know, if you, if you just really want to simplify things. So all these things, um, meaning history, technology, knowledge, studies, um, and the fact that we all want to live a happy and healthy life, um, I think really make uh, contrast therapy saunas, in particular infrared saunas as well, a very, very interesting technology from a health and a sustainable, uh, sustainability and longevity perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Hannes. And uh, absolutely, I find the topic fascinating in terms of, if we look at saunas, you know, they mentioned that the first little traces of saunas were like 2000 BC or even earlier than that, which is crazy because obviously back then there was no technology whatsoever. But even if you think, let's say Wim Hof, when we're talking about cold exposure, he was doing already the breathing and the cold exposure way before they actually understood the physiological mechanisms underlying the benefits. And so, yeah, that's a really interesting topic, which is like sometimes our bodies and minds know what's best for us, even though we don't have the proof, basically. And the, so looking back, you know, from the 2000s, BC, then we jump to the 1950s, I think, when it comes to the first electric sauna in Finland. And then we see also the advent of infrared uh, saunas. So can you shed light, given your very long experience on the topic, between this, the traditional sauna and the infrared sauna, uh, both from a health uh, benefit perspective, but also from a user experience one? Sure. I mean, um, you know, I think maybe just for context, like I think it was in the 1980s that Japanese researchers really found out about infrared. And, you know, it always sounds like a very technical term, you know, infrared, you speak about wavelength, somehow it's heat, somehow it's light. So maybe just to provide a little bit of a softer entry, essentially infrared is, is invisible light. Right. So similar to how you have UV light or how you have uh, X-rays, you know, there are a lot of light spectrums available. Infrared is just one of the light spectrums. It's primarily invisible. Um, you know, although it obviously is artificially created in a sauna, it's it's natural. Like you have it in fire, you have it in healing elements. Um, the sun is made up to 50 percent of infrared. Um, so therefore, you know, it's a very natural wavelength. And essentially what infrared is doing, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's utilizing light. Um, and this is used to raise the core temperature, you know, uh, that's essentially what it does. So just, I just wanted to provide a bit of context because oftentimes people 
are scared of this terminology and they get lost in the details. But infrared technically is light. This light heats us as a core, you know, heats our bodies. Um, and the mechanism for infrared is, is almost the same as sunlight. You know, we have photoreceptors in the skin and, uh, and over time they get activated and our core temperature rises. But if we go back to the basics, which is, I think, what you were quite keen on then, you know, you have traditional saunas. They're often referred to as Finnish saunas because, as you said, you know, the, the Finnish and I think also the Estonian, um, they're probably the cultures all over the world that really own the sauna space in the sense of highest number of saunas per um, per capita, you know, probably in total numbers as well and you know for those that actually have been to Finland and Estonia I'm sure you can um, you can relate to that that no matter where you go there's always saunas actually that's what they call them um, it's a beautiful ritual very cleansing you know it's a in, in those countries it's also used for social activities you know you go there even on a business meeting you discuss important business you know with friends you kind of talk about that stuff and it just really becomes like a, a very social thing to do but obviously what happens while you know, we use one of these finished saunas, we're actually faced with air temperatures of, of 80, you know, 70, 80, 90, 100, maybe even 110 degrees, on, depending on how extreme it is. Um, typically, uh, or traditionally, this was actually made from fire. So you literally had, you know, an oven at the back of the sauna, you'd put it on there, on there would be a bucket of water, this bucket and the water in there would would be getting to a boiling temperature and the hot vapor would essentially run into the sauna, obviously over time increasing the sauna. So, you know, you'd be in there for 10, 15 minutes, you're exposed to these high temperatures. Over time, your core temperature rises and you're like, man, this is really hot. So the body actually needs to start sweating in order to cool the body. You do two or three rounds, that's the traditional way. An infrared sauna, um, is also a sauna. I know the Finnish people would say, oh, this is not a real sauna, but you know, I think there's more and more research coming out that actually infrared saunas have a place. They're incredibly, um, incredibly useful to really incorporate it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but the mechanism is very different. So as I said, as I said before, infrared is a natural wavelength, but in an infrared sauna, we produce this artificially. So it's an electric sauna, as you refer to, and in an infrared sauna, you have infrared heating panels. These panels can be made up from different materials. They can be carbon, they can be ceramic. Some German companies use magnesium, others might use halogen bulbs. Um, and electricity, in basic terms, runs into this heater. The heater actually heats up. Uh, and, and the heater gets a certain surface temperature. And then the infrared heat is radiated from this heater. You know, obviously the higher the temperature, you know, the more you're in, the, in a different infrared spectrum. Um, and if you look at what an, how an infrared sauna looks like, you know, it's like a room, you know, four walls, uh, floor, ceiling. You have these heating elements inside the sauna. Uh, and you have very short preheating times, so only 15 to 20 minutes, because it's not about hot air temperature. You know, the maximum temperature you typically find in an infrared sauna is 40 to 70 degrees, but it really isn't about the air temperature. It's more about the infrared heat being emitted from these heaters. Our bodies, because ideally we are the naked, you know, we absorb the heat through the skin and over time our core temperature increases. So rather than doing two or three iterations, you typically do one session lasting up from a minimum of 20 minutes up to a maximum of 45 or 50 minutes because it takes your body longer and for the heat to be processed in your body. But over time, your core temperature rises, you start to sweat, you detoxify, um, and all of that without fire, without threefold electricity, without any moisture and a very, very ele um, electricity or energy efficient setup. And I think that's in, in sort of a long answer from my point of view, the difference between those two, also from a modality perspective and, and really incorporating it into your home. Mm -hmm. And so also from a user experience perspective, the, the difference is like with the traditional sauna, you have all of this steam and you, you feel more hot, theoretically, because you're in a hot room, while the other one is less impactful from that perspective, because everything happens more inside. Initially, yes. Like initially, obviously, because you're in an infrared sauna, you're not coming into a cranking hot room. But what you will realize, obviously, because you're staying longer in an infrared sauna, you will get to the point where you feel like, man, this is boiling hot. But it just is different, you know. And I think a lot of people, especially at an older age, they say, these traditional saunas are too intense for me. Like I get dizzy when I step in there, you know, especially I think older women, they, they struggle with that. They say it's too hot for me. And that's, I think, when an infrared sauna is great. And, you know, I, 
a lot of we have a lot of men then saying, well, this isn't really a sauna. I'm not going to sweat. Um, but I would almost take a bet with every single man that, you know, if you stay long enough in an infrared sauna, your core temperature actually goes higher than in a traditional sauna because you are staying longer in it. And the mechanism of heat is very different. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I don't think it's either or both have their place. Um, and to me, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, an infrared sauna is so bloody easy to incorporate. You know, it hardly costs any electricity. There's no moisture. You can have it in your living room, sleeping room, bathroom, basement, cellar, garage, um, whereas a traditional sauna is a bit of a different setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in countries where, like, for example, Beyond Sapiens is based in Finland. So my business partner, Linda, she lives in Finland and she literally has a sauna as part of, you know, the situation because that's how things are in Finland which is amazing. Amazing. I live close to yes. Milan. There are no saunas. Like if you want a sauna, you need yeah, to go to the go. gym or to a spa center. But yeah, I yeah. Mean, you cannot really find them uh, at a residential regular house. And so that's where I think the infrared saunas can be easier to implement for sure. Uh, yeah. And continuing our exploration of infrared saunas, we're both very, very passionate about technology. And I know you have a decade of experience on the topic. So I would be curious to understand a little bit more deep uh, the technology behind infrared saunas. Sure. So, um, you know, I mean, I think the basic mechanism is really that <clears throat> different materials um, react differently to heat, right? So if you think about ceramic and you have a, you know, a ceramic cup, for instance, mm -hmm. this has been burned in an oven because it's a very heat resistant or, uh, you know, material. So if you think about, um, you know, materials that actually have a lot of heat exposure or heat resistance, you know, such as ceramic, you know, you, it makes sense to understand that these materials, because they can run hotter, you know, they also get hotter in an infrared sauna, but hotter is not necessarily better. Whereas if you, for instance, look at carbon, um, you know, carbon is a very, it's almost like a soft material. It gets artificially created. You know, typically they, you know, have actually carbon heaters there. They're big panels and they have a very even heat distribution. And because of the fact that the material is different and the heat distribution is different, you can actually produce different types of infrared. Now, there are three types of infrared. One is called far infrared. It's uh, typically the most gentle um, wavelength. It's very long in, in terms of the frequency, um, but very soft. It doesn't penetrate very deep. Um, but it's also the most natural one. Like, you know, for instance, it's being used in hospitals to keep babies warm. Mm -hmm you know, or it's being used in restaurants at times to keep the food warm. Like that's the type of infrared. It's very gentle um, and, you know, it doesn't penetrate very, very deep. And you have mid-infrared, um, which is a bit shorter, means a little, a, a bit more energy is essentially in that wavelength. Um, and that penetrates up to three to four millimeters into the skin. So it already penetrates deeper. And then there's near-infrared. Near-infrared is the shortest, but the most intense wavelength which even penetrates up to um, five or six millimeters, right? So it essentially goes through the, through the upper layers of the skin and through that really raises the core temperature. So knowing that and knowing that the surface temperature of a heater determines the type of infrared that is being generated, for instance, you know, in these carbon, we use carbon ceramic heaters. They're sort of a patent that we came up 11 years ago, um, you know, we know that we want a surface temperature between say 85 and 150. And you can actually calculate this backwards, what this wavelength equates to. So knowing this, you know, we, we designed this heater to be around the um, 9.8 or, you know, around the eight, nine and a half microns, which is more like the human frequency, which is, you know, if you wrap your two hands together and you generate heat and you kind of take them apart, you actually feel that we as human beings, we emit heat, we emit infrared. So we've designed these heaters to match the type of infrared that we as humans emit, just obviously on a much more intense level. So, you know, you can really technically design this heater as you wanted to in order to really come up with a great infrared experience. Um, that is the sort of the technology aspects from a heater's perspective. And there, you know, if you do your research, some would say carbon is best, others with ceramic is best, others say halogen is best. And 
what we try to do is we, we try to combine these different wavelengths because, you know, far infrared has its place, it works very well for detoxification. Mid infrared has its place, it works very well for wound healing, you know, for sort of really um, providing skin benefits. And near infrared also works very well. Um, it, you know, it really provides deep and soothing heat for relaxation on the muscles, the ligaments, um, and potentially also the bones. Um, and that's why we combine all these types of infrared in what we call a full spectrum sauna or full spectrum infrared. Um, you know, some of the more established companies have all pivoted towards full spectrum because the narrative of obviously, if you can really provide different wavelengths, then, you know, you provide different benefits to your body. Uh, but ultimately, with all of these technologies, the, 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 the primary mechanism in health in an infrared sauna is to raise your core temperature. And with that, you have a cardiovascular um, aspect. You know, your heart rate goes up to 120, 130, 140 beats per, beats per minute. Um, you know, your heart needs to pump. You know, you detoxify through sweating. Um, and that's basically the underlying mechanism of an infrared sauna. And sure, you can use different heaters, different technology to raise that core temperature effectively. Um, and that's the infrared, but the second bit, which, and I know I talk a lot, but I think it's important. The second bit is, um, EMF and ELF, you know, EMF stands for electromagnetic frequencies, ELF stands for extremely low frequencies. Um, and, you know, commonly it's also referred to as, as electrosmog, meaning it's a negative effect of electricity running or in a, a current running, um, and, you know, the stronger the current, the higher the EMF exposure is. The, health, the World Health Organization has really set standards to actually say, look, you know, if you are close to a device or an electrical current, these are the threshold that should be exceeded. Um, and that's particularly relevant because in an infrared sauna, because you're literally sitting in a closet or in a, in a you know, in a, in a sauna and you have heaters all around you. So you naturally have a very high exposure of EMF and ELF. Um, and that's obviously counterproductive for your health. And therefore, that's something to really look out for. Um, if you are looking at investing into an infrared zone, there's probably only a handful of companies worldwide who really own that space. I, I can, you know, hands down say we're probably the company that really has the lowest EM, EMF and ELF levels worldwide. Um, and there's more about technology, but I really feel like on a fundamental um, basis, it comes down to the heater and the EMF, and those are because this is the heart of the sauna. You know, if you have great heaters, they raise your torque temperature, wonderful. You have cardiovascular workout, and then the second one is how safe is it really? And that's where the EMF and the ELF component comes in. Okay, yeah, thanks for sharing. And it's always uh, pretty much in anything related to health and longevity, is about finding that sweet spot between. You know, let's say to promote longevity, we need to be in a calorie restriction. Yes, but we don't need to be too much in a calorie restriction, otherwise we're gonna lose muscle mass, lean muscle mass. And so it's, it's a really interesting conundrum to, to solve. And Absolutely. overall, like continuing a little bit on the technology perspective, I always think of technology as an enabler, an accelerator for humanity overall. And that of course can be connected to our health and longevity. So we're gonna go deeper into the longevity piece in just a minute, but if you could sum it up, briefly like you already mentioned the cardiovascular benefits but what are what, what's the bird's eye view benefits of infrared saunas yeah i mean i think it's twofold <clears throat> the first one is just really the accessibility of getting a cardiovascular workout in you know i think we know that exercise is important and it's important for the cardiovascular benefits which is why you know cardio exercise is very much recommended and the second piece is obviously muscle mass, right? Because the, the, the older we get, the more, the less muscle mass we have, but we actually know that we need muscle mass in order to, you know, get older and, you know, make sure that our body's functions are good. So knowing that, um, and knowing that a lot of people are sick, uh, are in pain and are probably struggling with getting an hour of cardio in. I mean, that, that, you know, if someone is fatigued or, you know, has, um, you know, seasonal affective disorder or has chronic joint inflammation, good luck trying to squeeze in cardio twice a week. Even for someone that is healthy, who has kids and a job and maybe a business or something else, it's very challenging. And you're constantly in the trade-off between strength workout and cardio. Even I find myself in that. And so, so knowing the importance of cardiovascular health, I think um, that's a given for longevity. Yeah. You, know, you can read thousands of books or studies. Everyone speaks about the fact that we need a healthy heart. Without that, it's, you know, we're not actually going to live long. And I think in some countries, cardiovascular diseases 
are the number one mortality factor in the world. That's heart disease, it's strokes, it's, uh, you know, high blood pressure, right? So it, it's not, you know, it's not a, a hidden fact or something. It's, 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 the, it's the elephant in the room and it's being addressed at the moment. And surely not just hopping in a sauna doesn't help you, but it's one element that actually helps you regulate your nervous system. So knowing that, um, I think saunas, I would wish saunas find a place in every household. And I don't think traditional saunas uh, are possible to actually to be found in every household because because of the excessive electricity use, because of the excessive space, and because of the excessive setup, meaning three phase electricity, um, you know, and and moisture and 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 you know potentially using it with fire. So that's when infrared sauna really is a great modality because often they come flat packed. You know, the smallest one is only a, a one square meter. It doesn't need three-phase electricity. You can move with your sauna. You know, companies offer, like us, offer a lifetime warranty. So it's almost like your number one health gadget you just take with you. And it doesn't take the same effort and time to really do it on a daily basis. You know, our wish with this infrared sauna is to create a meaningful health tour that you get to use for an hour a day and you maximize your health span, right? Which is why we bring in a lot of different health modalities. And it's possible because... It only costs you 40 cents per session, you know, mm -hmm. which a lot of people can afford. And sure, yes, you need to pay for the sauna up front, but, you know, you have very low maintenance costs. You can use 45 minutes in there. You're going to downregulate your nervous system. You're going to get the cardiovascular benefit. You're going to detoxify it through sweating. And you haven't even touched on, on toxins and the importance of high toxicity on our thyroid, on our immune system, on mold and what it does to the body. Um, and you get a whole lot of other health benefits in, and it allow, and it's you know due to the fact that it's very short to preheat and, and modular, it doesn't take a lot of space. I genuinely believe it's the number one thing to do for your cardiovascular health on a daily basis. You can easily get it three to four times a week for an hour in the morning or in the evening. I think it's possible, and with with Finnish or with traditional saunas, just because of the time they take to preheat, because of the effort to go to a health club, as you referenced, um, I don't think. They provide the, you know, the, the same mechanisms in terms of ease of use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if we want to make them something part of our daily routine, we need to have them close by. Otherwise, we're not going to stick to a, a regimen overall. And yeah, I want to make this very. There's constantly this conversation: is infrared better or traditional saunas better? You know, and I think at the moment the hardliners really say traditional saunas is the way. But there's a lot of a ton of research coming out on infrared saunas, and I think over the next five years, you know, that the picture, the, you know, it, the, the tides will turn, so to speak. Um, and to me, it's not an either or question. I try to use an infrared sauna three times a week. Do I ever? Do I always achieve it? No, but. Most of the times I do. And then if I can, I try to get a traditional sauna in over the weekend because I enjoy the ritual. I enjoy the social nature of that. But it takes me at least two to three hours to head there, to make it a ritual, go with friends, take a break in between. And and that's how I like to think about mm -hmm. infrared saunas versus traditional saunas. Okay, nice. And so going a little bit deeper on the health and longevity benefits, given that we have Beyond Sapiens are all about doing that and helping others do the same. Like, how do infrared saunas fit into this quest of extending lifespan and health span? Yeah, good question. I, I'd almost paraphrase it as how do they actually not fit in. <laughs> um, but let's, let's maybe start at the top. I think the big one is certainly detoxification. There was a study, I think, done in 2014, which essentially analyzed uh, the levels of toxins and other certain chemical substances uh, in in sweat versus uh, urine or blood, right? And and it kind of tried to look at and try to look at um, the different pathways of detoxification that we as humans have. Like surely we've got our internal detoxification organs, right? And I think they they were great, especially liver. Obviously, um, has a vital role in getting toxins out of the body. Um, but what this study found is actually that certain um, toxins, in particular, but also chemical substances, are actually more effectively detoxed through sweat, right? It was kind of something like aluminium, cadmium, arsen, um, and it wasn't like a magnitude of maybe 10%, but it was up to 20 times, 25 times more effective, um, which means like 25 higher concentrations of these substances were found in sweat compared to urine blood. 
So that was a, a pretty big eye opener for a lot of the people that said, actually, you can't really detox through the skin. And, you know, for those that don't know, this, the skin is actually the largest organ in the body, um, you know, and, and, and it's not like a one, it's not a, um, a one entry barrier. It's actually like a sponge, meaning we can, we can absorb things if we put, you know, chemicals or stuff in our skin. Um, or, but we, it, it can also, you know, our body can also use the skin to essentially get stuff flushed out of the system. And when we sweat, sure, it's water, but it's minerals and it's also toxins and other chemical substances. Um, so, so that has true power. And I think if you looked at, uh, you know, toxic exposure, or, you know, certain, um, toxic, uh, substances and markers, for instance, in drink and uh, drinking water uh, in, in the food industry, it's on an all time high, mm -hmm. right? So there's no, there's no, um, there's no denying of that. The question is really, does it correlate with an increase in certain and in certain diseases, cardiovascular, autoimmune, who knows? Causation doesn't equal correlation, right? So there's more studies to be done, but there's a lot of health experts that really say high levels of toxins do have an effect on our human health, on our thyroid in particular, on the immune system in particular, um, potentially on chronic fatigue or seasonal affective disorder to some extent. Um, but they're better experts to comment on that. So, but knowing the fact that we can actually have a really great way to detox, to me, that's the number one. The second one that we talked about is cardiovascular um, disease, right? We talked about that. Um, it's on an all-time high. Uh, in fact, I think I read recently that actually the life expectancy is, is at the point of actually coming down again, which means we're actually not getting older. And I think it's partly due to the lifestyle uh, or probably primarily due to the lifestyle. Um, high stress, not actually having a, a, a good heart health. And I touched base on this before. If someone is sick or burnt out, good luck trying to squeeze in cardio twice a week. I mean, sure, if you have a good coach and with a lot of discipline, you can you can take small step. And I, I really, you know, an infrared sauna can't substitute for exercise, but it can actually provide a great cardiovascular workout. Because while while we're sitting in the infrared sauna or in the sauna, we're relaxing, we can read a book, we can meditate, we can actually talk our body is actually going through workout. I used the aura ring to sort of check my maximum heart rate and my, my, my normal pulse is kind of 55, 60, so quite low. But in an infrared zone, I went up to 130, 140. That is zone two cardio if you actually were, if you were to jog or run with a friend, like you would almost be able to not talk. So like that's the intensity for the heart, right? So we're training the heart. Our immune system is being conditioned because we essentially go through an artificial fever. Hippocrates said, give me a, you know, give me a fever and I'll cure every disease. I, I, I don't know actually whether he said it. I read recently that he might actually not be the original author, but I think a lot of people have heard that. Um, and we know that the, you know, fever is a built in genetical mechanism from our body to fight off bacteria and viruses. So if we are able to elevate our, our, our core temperature by in the infrared sauna over 40 minutes up to a degree and a half, right? So that's a 38.4, 38.5 fever we're actually having in an infrared sauna. Then we strengthen our immune system. Um, you know, we talked about reducing inflammation, you know, like that's infrared saunas are very well known for that. You know, they've helped with arthritis, with chronic joint inflammation. Um, it provides a sense of positive stress. You know, often this is referred to as hormesis or hermetic stress, meaning like it's actually uncomfortable for the body and it's uncomfortable for us, but it actually does something very positive to our mindset, to our mental health, but also to our body. Um, longevity, you're always talking about heat shock proteins. Very, very interesting topic, you know, a lot for those that don't know about it. Um, heat shock proteins are, in essence, uh, supportive structural proteins that come in and repair or fix it, other proteins. And we're obviously made up to a very large proportion of, um, of proteins. So if we essentially expand and extend our cellular health or life cycle, you know, that means we age less technically. And I think Dr. Rhonda Patrick from the US is probably the most renowned researcher on this topic. She found that um, primarily traditional uh, saunas obviously activate heat shock proteins. Once they're activated, so once you've had a sauna, they can active for, uh, stay active for two to six weeks. So it's actually a very long time that these stay active. And for a long time, there was skepticism about the fact whether infrared saunas do get activated, but Seam Lant and a few other very well-renowned biohackers and health experts have provided a very clear timeline on the fact that actually 
heat shock proteins are being activated in an infrared. So you just have to stay longer to obviously get this kick in from a, from a core temperature aspect. So these are just some of the health benefits. You know, I could probably talk on, but to me, these are probably the most important. I just want to jump in real quick to tell you that if you are considering getting a clear line sauna, ensure to mention Beyond Sapiens to your sales rep to get the best price. While if you want to 2x your energy levels and extend your health span, then you can learn more about our Beyond Sapiens coaching. You can find all the links in the description. Now, let's get back to the interview. Once, and I genuinely believe that, you know, the saunas have played a vital role in longevity. Like that's what the research is indicating. And there's a ton more research underway from Alzheimer to depression markers to blood, um, you know, blood pressure um, that are all impacted indirectly or directly from saunas. So I, I think it's a vital part and I think we'll only see more good news coming out on infrared saunas and traditional saunas. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I know it's only the tip of the iceberg because I know like on your website, you have a comprehensive overview of all the benefits and there are a lot. I just wanted to briefly touch also on the weight loss part because like, yes. first of all, we know that to, you know, to live longer, yes, we need to be in a calorie restriction, potentially maybe doing some fasting, eating super healthy, so on and so forth, but maintaining a steady, healthy, lower weight is one of the most important things because being uh, overweight or obese uh, is very strongly correlated with poor health outcomes. And I know you uh, with Care Like Sauna have done a study together with the Binghamton University in New York. Uh, so if yes. you can tell us more about it, I think it would be really cool. Yeah, again, one of these things that, you know, we always uh, received uh, smiles on, it's like, oh, you know, why like surely weight loss doesn't work and i want to be very transparent and say that at the moment this is a hypothesis what that means it's you know it's proven until it's proven otherwise right so you know it's not black and white evidence um but in this study um we tested participants uh in york it was three times a week it was the nyu the university of binghamton in new york as you referenced and we tested actually um whether people would notice a difference in uh body fat percentage if they used an infrared sauna three times a week and the rest would stay the same you know um and they tested it with people in the morning and in the evening um and then you know they just measured the body percentage and i think what they found is that um typically people saw a four to five percent reduction in uh body fat and the body fat was stronger for people who did it at night for people than who did it in the morning um, and again, it's a hypothesis. So, you know, the theory or the hypothesis really is around the, the spike of uh, HDH, so human growth hormone. Um, but I also know for a fact that if you actually use an infrared sauna, it also spikes your glucose levels, which is, I think, why an infrared sauna in the morning might not actually be as effective. Because from a blood sugar perspective, you don't want to actually have a very strong spike in glucose because, you know, it's very, you know, you'll actually be more hungry throughout the day because of that extreme spike. But what that also tells is really that, you know, while we actually sit in an infrared sauna, our body needs to provide glucose, meaning energy, in order to maintain the process of the human body. And it makes sense. Like, you know, if your heart rate goes up and if your body actually is sweating and if everything internally happens faster because of an increased temperature, that requires energy. And this energy is calories. It's energy, energy being burned. And therefore, you know, it's very black and white that if you use an infrared sauna and your body goes through a workout, then you're burning calories. How much? That is the question, right? I, I see very wild numbers from uh, from two to 600 kilocalories. That's what some of the other studies have found. But the I looked at the methodology and it's not, it's not a lot of common sense. So to me, that feels like a bit of a wild number. It's very different to quantify, very, very different to quantify because technically you'd have to somehow measure the water or the sweat that you've lost and then calculate it backwards in terms of how many calories you've burned. Um, but it was a noticeable change in body fat. Um, I always like to think about this and it's the same with the Finnish sauna study. Is it really the infrared sauna itself or is it maybe the fact that because you have done an infrared sauna, 
you are positively impacting your lifestyle, meaning you're probably more likely to take the steps or you're more likely to not actually have a beer. Maybe you're actually more likely to switch to mineral water or tea just because of that health consciousness, right? And I, I noticed that myself. Like if I'm actually in a very positive routine, I drink less alcohol. I eat, I eat healthier. So that's something that the study didn't look at. Um, therefore, is the infrared sauna supportive of that? 100%. Is it solely the infrared sauna responsible for the body fat loss? I don't think so because we're always human beings. We're always... You know, we're not predictable. We're emotional human beings. Um, and if we have stress for a week, we'll probably eat more junk food, right? But I think um, to me, it's very black and white that the <clears throat> increased cardiovascular activity in the body equates with a calorie um, deficit or a calorie calorie um, uh, consumption almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because you literally burn more calories by sitting. Uh, so it's like your metabolic rate increases during that session. And it most Absolutely. likely has some positive effect, effects also after the session. And I think what you touched on is a really interesting topic in terms of, let's also take the aura ring, for example. Like, it doesn't change anything of your sleep, but only having it and seeing the data, you're like, oh, I guess I should change something that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I might say, well, you know, now my sleep is way better because of this. No, but it, it was a contributor. And so I think Absolutely. the same is true for, at the end of the day, any kind of technology. Like even now I'm tracking my glucose to check all the things. And it's only, it, again, it's, it's not giving me, uh, it's not changing my habits directly, but I'm changing my habits after seeing the data. And so, yeah, it's all of this interesting dance between the two. Absolutely. And it's, <clears throat> it's very hard to quantify, which is, I think, why you're right in the sense that, you know, education helps to make qualified decisions and data helps to make good decisions right and i think you know it's something we're actually working on because everyone knows saunas are good you know and i think to give an example everyone thinks the longer i stay in an infrared sauna the better right and i, I think the tendency is true because you know your, your cardiovascular workout is more intense um you know your core temperature is higher the longer you stay in there but it actually acts like a u-curve at some point you're actually doing more bad then you're doing good because it's too exhaustive it's the same with exercise if you overdo it it's not healthy same with sun if you overdo sun you get a sunburn it's not healthy it's the same with the sauna it's just a lot more difficult to quantify um, but there is a pivotal point and um, i think dr mark cohen one of the most renowned sauna researchers from australia he really said you want to get to a point where it's uncomfortable then take three deep breaths and go out if you if you go beyond this point you're most likely ending up with headaches or with not feeling very good. And, and that's usually a sign that you've overdone it. Okay, thanks for sharing. And I know that depending on the personality of a person, I think this might be really accurate in terms of, personally, I'm someone that always tend to overdo things. Like when I started intermittent fasting, I was like, well, you know, I will fast for like crazy hours. Or when I started doing breathing exercises, as I've mentioned to you privately, my diaphragm got ultra contracted because I overdid it. Same with exercise. And so it's always is just like technically our body knows, but we're overriding it with our prefrontal cortex. And in some cases, yes. we need to do that, let's say for lack of motivation or whatever. But in other moments, we do need to trust our bodily instincts more than our brains. Absolutely. And I think data will help with that to some extent. Yeah, for like, sure. You know, just because there will be evidence that ideally overrules our brain uh, to some extent with some conscious and, and good decision making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And also uh, talking about making saunas more accessible, I wanted to touch on another point, which is obviously, as we mentioned earlier, like you cannot maybe have the space for a traditional sauna, but it's also true that if you live in a maybe a smaller apartment, you don't really have the opportunity to dedicate uh, a space of a room for an infrared sauna because you don't have that space. And so nowadays we have seen the rise of sauna blankets which they have their space, so I, I don't want to bash on them. Uh, but of course, they do not provide the same benefits of the uh, of an infrared sauna, but but just the heat aspect. But I also know that you are at Clearlight uh, created like a hybrid solution that provides the infrared therapy benefits while also making it into a smaller package. So if you can tell us more about it, I think I think it would be really interesting. Sure. And, um, you know, I, yeah, I mean, we talked about the blankets before and I think, you know, it's, it's great, like in the sense that, you know, 
infrared is being brought to the mass market because not everyone can afford a sauna and probably never will. And I think it's it's brilliant, right? So if it's a question of actually, you know, if I don't have the money to buy something proper, go like an infrared sauna blanket is good. But you know, for for people that really understand how light works and how infrared heat works, the blanket is a bit of a gimmick. Um, because, you know, we talked about the surface temperature of the heater determining actually the infrared heat. And that is a problem, right? Like, because you're literally in a, in a cocoon in a sleeping bag and the, you know, the, this, you know, the heating panels are directly touching your skin. There's a limit of really how much and how much good infrared is being absorbed. And I've seen actually online some, uh, some, some pictures that actually referenced a blanket that you need to put around you and then go into the infrared on a blanket. But infrared is light. If we actually have a blanket or clothes on, we're blocking the infrared light. And sure, it, over time it gets warm. It's almost like a sleeping bag. If you put three people in a sleeping bag, you'll start to sweat, right? Because heat is being generated. That's the same mechanism in an infrared sauna blanket. Because oftentimes, you know, the heat, the heat exposure is not good, but does it help you sweat? Yeah, of course. But is a proper infrared the way it's been designed in Mother Nature? No, you know. So, and I think that's um, you know. Therefore, I'm thankful for infrared sauna blankets because it provides a piece of education, you know. And I think everyone who understands light, and you know, we try to educate a lot on this topic, will understand that this is a compromise. But you know, would I love someone to use a blanket uh, versus not actually you, not being able to sweat? Hell yeah, like use a blanket because sweating is better than not sweating. Um, but what we have done uh, as a most portable solution is we have um, a sauna dome, right? So we essentially literally have two dome elements, the round and inside we have the same infrared heaters that we use in our cabins. Um, and then we have a mat and on the inside of the mat, we have two heaters built in. Again, there's something in between because otherwise it would be too hot to lie on it. Um, so therefore the, the heat from the mat is a little bit weaker than what we have in our cabins, but the two dome elements on the front are fully stacked with these infrared heaters. And this unit is actually so intense that you can actually practice do-it-yourself hypothermia, which is a known cancer treatment in Germany. Again, that's not anything I'm advising or we're advising on, but the core temperature can go beyond normal levels. We've actually worked with the Acadia Cancer Clinic in Germany on this, and they've essentially been able to use this to really induce temperatures of beyond 40 degrees Celsius. Again, health disclaimer, we cannot recommend that. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely not recommending this for anyone to do at home. But the fact that this infrared heat and this unit is so intense really just shows how much your core temperature can actually rise using good sources of infrared. And it probably has a footprint of 80 centimeters times 60 centimeters times 80 centimeters. You can sort of fold it together stack it upright. Um, it's not really the definition of portable because it's 35 kilos. Um, you know, I mean, you can carry it, you can carry the individual components, put it in your car, potentially drive to a client. That's what some people do. Um, but it is a, it is a bulky unit. It comes with a very long warranty again. Um, and it also comes with low EMF levels because we say if we do anything in that infrared so in that health space, it's to be safe, effective, and a good quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really powerful. And, also going deeper on the technology and safety perspective, like I personally am, but I also know you are very much into technology, futurism, the future of humanity and all of that stuff, because that can simply help improve our quality of life, right? But of course, at the same time, we always need to be mindful of the immediate benefits with the long-term uh, effects of our choices. And this is true in everything we do, you know, nutrition, exercise, whatever else. And I obviously the same applies to using saunas and infrared saunas. So especially from the EMF, uh, like the radiations perspective that you briefly touched on, like how uh, does clear light sauna address those concerns? It really starts with the heater design. Like the way we designed the heater is we have a, we have a front and the back, right? So if, if that's, that's essentially the front. Um, that this is where the the, the the majority of the renders infrared is being admitted, and we have sort of heating wires running from plus to minus. On the back side, we have uh, an opposite current, much weaker, that runs the other way around. So for those that actually understand physics and understand electromagnetic fields, if you have two 
uh, electromagnetic fields with opposite poles, they actually reduce their exposure. So that's basic physics. That's essentially what we do on every heater. We actually have an opposite current that really mitigates and reduces fields. Um, we, in the cabins, uh, all of the electrical components are in the roof. Why are they in the roof? Um, a lot of manufacturers have them under the bench, which means if you have high exposure of EMF, you're literally sitting on a herd and a source of EMF and ELF, which can, you know, I don't want to think about sperm count or anything, but, you know, there are theories around cancer, around fertility in men and women. And it just makes sense. Like you wouldn't sit on a Wi-Fi router as well, especially not on a sauna and a health device. Like that is common sense, which is why we put everything on the roof and we shield the roof from the inside. Because, you know, a lot of companies say EMF is not a problem for us and we don't have EMF. You know, the companies would say it's a zero EMF sauna. It's not true. It's not possible to have a zero EMF sauna. It's, it's a, whenever there's an electric current, you always have EMF. It's a question of how do you design the product so that where the user actually uses the device, you know, has ideally as little exposure as possible. But you can always measure EMF. That's the nature of electricity, um, which is why we place these, uh, these electrical components in the roof. We shield it from the inside with a foil that mitigates the EMF so that it actually doesn't penetrate into the cabin. Um, then we use carbonized meshes so um, a, a sort of grounding the heater with, an, with a dedicated grounding circuit to the base or to the, to the floor that reduces an ELF. Every heater has its own ELF circuit. Um, there's more to it, like the distances are really optimized, right? So that the, the high exposures of ENF and ELF, they're a bit further away, which also from a health perspective makes sense because it would be too hot otherwise. So these are just some of the some of the things we're actually contemplating and thinking about. And to my extent, we're probably the only company who successfully really mitigates EMF to virtually undetectable levels where you sit. If you measured on the roof, you would find something. If you measured on the heater, you'd find something. But where you're sitting, EMF is zero. And ELF is a different unit. Uh, it's, more, it's measured in volt per meter. So it's a, an electricity, um, the effects of an electricity field per meter or per square centimeter, uh, square, square meter to square centimeter. Um, and we've, I think, brought that down to a tenth of the closest competitor that we were able to measure. In fact, actually in Amsterdam, you know, I took measurements of one of our competitors. It was 10 times higher, 15 times higher. I won't mention the name, um, but it is a real concern. And I think for someone that is listening, and wants to understand this, please, 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 if not from, if not us, ask another party these questions. And if the answer is not a problem, this company has fundamentally not understood the importance of EMF and ELF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for uh, addressing this very important topic. Uh, and I know that overall Clear Light Sauna is known as one of the most innovative and effective saunas on the market. And I think the fact that you offer lifetime warranty on your residential use products kind of you know, makes it very clear. And and I know that, um, like, I would just be curious to understand some user case studies because I know you have also quite uh, notable people using your saunas, athletes, so on and so on and so forth. So if you can share something with us about that as an inspiration. I think if you go through case studies of people using it, um, it really, there's, there's different... There's, a, there's different types or classes of these institutions or people, right? Like we have the, the Mayo Clinic, um, you know, like the very internationally, very well-renowned um, clinic that also does, a, I think, amazing knowledge and education in the health space. They use our infrared saunas. We have the Hippocrates Health Institute um, in Florida, which is um, where they use sprouting or raw food combined with fasting, psychotherapy, and infrared saunas twice a day. They've been using our sauna for 15 years. Uh, we have Deepak Chopra, who is obviously a, a spiritual leader in that space. We have, you know, famous, famous Formula One drivers. I can't mention them. We have former boxers. We have soccer players. You get athletes. You know, some of those I mentioned actually on our website. Um, we have celebrities, DJs, actors, uh, Zach Efron, you know, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is very outspoken on the benefits of infrared sauna. She uses a clear light sauna. But also in Europe, there's a num large number of people and are very famous people that um, invest into that. Um, I think that the nature of their interest in such technology is different, right? Like if you look at a clinic, a doctor or a health clinic, or they obviously have a very different um, interest, which is around detoxification, um, you know, disease prevention, um, and they experiment and they study on this. 
if you have someone like an athlete or a Formula One driver who really needs to perform at the peak level, they again have a different interest. For them, it's about performance, it's about recovery, it's about, you know, how can they give their best f with as little recovery time as possible? Like that's the interest of an athlete and so on. It's a great because, you know, they, they provide the muscle with, nu with nutrients and ox oxygen, right? We haven't actually talked about recovery and, and, and sort of strength improvement. Um, then I think celebrities for them, it might be you know, the beauty effects, right? Like a lot of the time because of the detoxification and this, the skin, and a lot of people say, wow, I'm glowing or wow, you're glowing. And what's the secret? And oftentimes well, I've been using an infrared sauna because my skin looks so much better. Um, cause you're obviously, you know, nourishing the skin through the sweat and the salt, the, you know, the detoxification element. So you can already see like, it's quite the, 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 the interest is quite different. Um, but almost all of them invest into one for health reasons. And it could be performance to, you know, give the best, which again is also a form of health. It could be to actually, you know, prevent disease or potentially even treat disease. Um, or it could be just an overall view on health, incorporating infrared saunas or heat exposure. Um, so those are just some of the elements. And you know, we spoke about cancer clinics, we spoke about, um, you know, yeah, very sick people. Um, and I think, you know, there's a saying that says, you know, um, I can't, can't go okay, was along the lines of saying like, you know, if you, health, health is everything, but if you have everything without health, then it's nothing like it's something along mm -hmm. those lines. Right? We all want to live long, we wanna, but we also want to live a healthy life and ideally, you know, with as little sickness or disease as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, zooming out and looking into the future, this is always uh, how I end these conversations because like it's a topic that I'm super, super passionate of because mm. I think no matter, you know, what we see around us or believe about society, we are constantly evolving and improving. You know, if you look back 100 years in terms of the societal norms, technology and just life conditions and also mortality rates, like we have in, uh, improved in dramatic ways and we're just seeing the um, the beginning of this exponential growth, thanks to all of the convergent, convergent technologies that are growing like crazy. This is one topic, but how do you think, where do you see the future of the infrared saunas, uh, both in the medium and long run? I think the more education and studies and knowledge we essentially are able to provide, I mean, and I don't mean correlation, I mean proper causation, proper studies, um, I think the more or the easier it'll actually get to spread the message and spread the word. Like, I think you and me were in, in a bubble, um, you know, in a bubble of um, very privileged, very well educated people that probably know a whole lot about saunas already. But the, and it's the same with the biohacking events in, in London, Amsterdam, or maybe even in the US. For a long time, biohacking was considered a rich people's hobby. And I still think it is to some extent. So the pivotal point will be how can these technologies and the knowledge around these technologies be brought to a greater mass? And that could be geographically speaking a mass or it could be demographically speaking a mass. And I think that is the challenge of health in general. Um, you know, if you look at what some of the most powerful companies are doing, they're all in the health and wellness space. You know, Amazon wants to do their own insurance. You know, they all are working on the Apple Watch, which incorporates at some point probably blood glucose measurement or skin temperature variation. You know, you get Aura, who's really partnering up on glucose measurement. So it's a battle at the moment between these big companies trying to actually really slice up the cake and have as much of the cake as possible. But I think we as human beings, we, we also have a saying in that in the sense that, um, you know, we technically should own our data. I think that's the biggest issue at the moment is that we don't own our health data, you know, mm -hmm. Google does, Apple does, Amazon does, and, or and we need to pay and, to access our health data. Uh, if we're talking about it's the stupid. Ring. Yeah. Why do we even talk about the fact that another company owns health data? So I, I really hope that, you know, it, whether it be it blockchain, be it, um, another organization, be it a provider that comes in with a proper genuine nonprofit approach. I think that needs to be the, the number one foundation that I would hope we see. I'm very doubtful that that would happen just because of 
money and the way the the system works. But I really hope that that is one of the major shifts we'll actually see in the next five or 10 years as technology evolves. On a product level, I think we'll see more and more IoT, Internet of Things related aspects actually flowing into the hardware or the products, meaning the interconnectedness of hard and software, I think it's just going to exponentially increase. AI has really made that very clear. Everyone can now deploy a health coach and, you know, use ChatGPT model four or five or whatever there is. Um, and therefore, I think the personalization and the interconnectedness between software and hardware is ultimately, I think, what we'll see in the future. And infrared, I saw no exception. You know, I think if we can somehow qualify wellness, that means sleep, that means you know, how's my sauna session? How's my ice bath session? Was it actually good that I did it or was it not good? Because we believe it's always good, but there's probably times where we shouldn't actually use it. When we're sick, it's too much for the organism. Um, and I, I, I genuinely think that that's coming. And then I would obviously hope that through studies and through edutainment, meaning education and entertainment, people um, see the power of hormetic stress of exercise, nutrition, and whatnot, and it, it's going to find a mass uh, application or mass adoption um, in that sense, at least in some way incorporating heat and cold. could be a cold shower, could be a, a hot bath. It doesn't always have to be a sauna um, in their home, and I think that's a long way ahead of us. Um, but fortunately, to to some of the technological advancements, to the fact that the world is more connected than uh, than ever before, and the fact that there's more knowledge available than ever before, and it'll just increase, I think um, a lot of the requirements are in position. But I would really hope that that, you know, that the the data and the knowledge is actually democratized as opposed to. Uh, an oligarchic system that just gives the power to a very few companies. And it's probably five or six, and you and I, we could easily name them within 10 seconds because it's very obvious who these companies are. No, I appreciate the, the reflection. I think it's really powerful. And I think the other piece of the equation before we wrap this off is that most like people watching this, they know already the importance of doing specific things to improve their health and longevity. But the problem is that the masses, they do not know the the effects that ch just some simple life changes uh lifestyle changes can have on their health or lifespan like there literally are uh really famous uh, researchers or professors that say you know if you would already do all the right things today you would easily reach 100 years old uh, mm -hmm. without needing to do anything crazy about your longevity and i think mm -hmm. the other piece to the equation is also the business world understanding this correlation between treating their people in a good way, not because of, oh, employee benefits to make them happy, mm. but more because if I make you happy and healthy, you have great benefits in your personal life, but they obviously yes. also translate to the business world. And so we have this beautiful synergistic approach to just maximizing our life. And I do hope that will happen Same in here. the future. Uh, yeah. And before we finish, if you also want to share with us the upcoming plans of Clear Light Sauna in terms of projects in research that we should stay tuned for? Look, I probably can't comment on that at the moment. Um, you know, I think there's something cool happen, happening in that space. I mean, we are maybe worth knowing is that um, we'd love to incorporate a vitamin D light in the sauna. You know, we have already incorporated red light therapy in the sauna. We've incorporated halo therapy in the sauna. So our vision is that the infrared sauna is not just going to be an infrared sauna. In fact, it's going to be in five on one, six on one, seven and one health device that allows you to stack these different modalities. Um, Sebastian and myself will actually relaunch our podcast. You know, we've had a podcast called The Sauna Show. You'll find some cool episodes on YouTube. We'll actually launch uh, The Healthy Show next because that's a new adventure for us. It's another brand that sells for healthy, sells for health, health simplified. And it also we make it, we take a piss about two Germans not actually being properly able to say healthy because uh, of the TAH. So we call it healthy. Um, and look, there's some other really cool products coming on the market, but it's it's not something I can mm -hmm. share yet. Uh, but if you follow us on Instagram uh, or Facebook or Instagram, you know, you'll, you'll hear about it for sure. Yeah, we'll put all the relevant links in the description. So thank you so much, Johannes, to, uh, for sharing your knowledge and expertise and the deep conversation. Very much appreciated. And I wish you all the best for the next steps. And I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. I really hope you've enjoyed this interview. 
If you want to learn how to optimize your performance and health span, please make sure to subscribe to the channel as we release weekly videos all about these topics. And if you want to 2x your energy levels and perform at your peak, we can help with our Beyond Sapiens coaching. You can learn more about it from our website, beyondsapiens.co. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.